Hello and welcome to the first episode of the year 2022. My name is Manny and this is Grubbany and today I'll be showing you how to make a multi-purpose alkaline vegan cake. This cake is so versatile and can be used for birthdays, anniversaries, Valentine's Day, basically for any occasion. This recipe is one of my signature recipes. Anyway, let's get started. I'm making this cake for those living the alkaline lifestyle but anyone is welcome to try it. First, we'll be making a tahini butter frosting. Add two cups of organic raw tahini to a large bowl. Add half a cup of organic coconut oil that's been sitting at room temperature. Whatever you do, make sure you're not adding a solid glob of coconut oil. It should be liquid. Next, add a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. I also like to add 1 tablespoon of coconut aminos. This is optional but you'll be missing out on a lot of flavor if you don't add it. Now for sweetness, you can add 3 to 4 tablespoons of agave nectar. Next, add 3 tablespoons of date syrup. In my opinion, taste is subjective so feel free to adjust this to your taste. Add a quarter cup of date sugar for texture and taste. Whisk to combine. Now this is the texture you're aiming for. At this point, you can give it a quick taste, then make all necessary adjustments. You can set this aside for now. Oh, and by the way, I've been getting a lot of messages about making an alkaline vegan cookie. And I just want to let you know I've been working on this for months. I'm almost there, but I'm not satisfied with the results yet. Please be patient. I promise you it's coming. <laughs> Alright y'all, let's make the cake. First you need 1 cup of fresh walnut milk. If you don't know how to make it, check out the link above. Add 1 cup of walnut milk to a bowl. Add a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. This is a personal choice but you could add a quarter teaspoon of Ceylon cinnamon. Also a personal choice, add 1 tablespoon of coconut aminos. Add a quarter cup of agave nectar. Don't worry, I added more in the background. Add 4 tablespoons of date syrup. If you're enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Add 4 tablespoons of organic applesauce. Finally, add a quarter cup of organic avocado oil. Give it a good whisk, then set it aside. For the dry ingredients, we need 2 cups of white spelt flour. We'll also need 2 cups of coarse kamut flour. I'm sure most of you will be confused at this point, but all I did to get my coarse kamut flour was to blend 2 cups of kamut cereal. Its coarseness will give you that crumbly cake texture. Add 2 cups of white spelt flour to a bowl. Next, add 2 cups of coarse kamut flour. Now here comes more date sugar and this is optional. Add a quarter cup of date sugar. Uh oh, here come the alkaline police in the comment section. <laughs> anyway, this is optional but you could add half a teaspoon of baking soda. There is no strong enough acid in the ingredients to fully activate it but for me it made a huge difference in the final outcome. Give your dry ingredients a good mix. Now we're going to save our dry ingredient into our wet mixture. If you're enjoying this video so far, I implore you to hit the like button. Check 
gently mix to combine the wet and dry ingredients. Now let's move on to some dry fruit you could add to your cake batter. And of course you could totally skip this step if you don't care about dried fruit. So these are called prunes. Prunes are basically dried plums. And the good thing about prunes is they do not ferment during or after the drying process. They're packed with potassium and other vital nutrients, but they're also packed with sugar, so be careful. I like to cut my prunes into half so I can cover a larger surface area of my cake with just a few prunes. Make sure you're getting the organic pitted prunes with no added sugar or preservatives. I'll leave a link in the description box below. This is also optional, but dried cherries will also be a good addition to your cake. Add one cup of dried cherries and prunes to your batter. You know, you could also use raisins, but I know most people hate them. Give it a good mix and set it aside. To add airiness and more volume to our cake, we're going to be making an unsweetened aquafaba meringue. Meringues can be easy but also complicated and to keep this video short, I'll just breeze through it. Don't worry, I'll be dedicating an entire video to show you how to make a sweetened and unsweetened chickpea meringue. Add 2 cups of chickpea meringue to your batter and fold in gently. Do not mix, fold gently. So you're gently folding in your meringue and not vigorously mixing it because you don't want it to collapse while combining it with your batter. Also, you need to move quickly at this point. Add your batter to a 7 by 3 inch baking dish or alkaline approved baking pan if you have one. Wipe off all spilled batter, then give it a shake and a tap to release trapped air. Now bake it in an oven set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 50 to 60 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the middle comes out dry. Our cake is done. Use a table knife to loosen up the cake so you can take it out without destroying it. Next, place the cake on a cake stand or a cake pedestal. Gently wriggle it free. Stop here and enjoy your cake, but if you're anything like me, you'd like to take it a little bit further. Mmm, just look at all that dried fruit. It took everything in me not to smash into this cake. <laughs> anyway, lift up the cake, grab a dollop of your tahini butter frosting, and place it in the middle of your cake stand. Spread it around a little to form a foundation, then gently lower your cake onto it. Gently give it a wriggle and it should hold your cake in place. Now give your tahini butter frost in a mix to loosen it up. Place a few dollops of your tahini butter frosting over the top of the cake. Now this is called an angled spatula and those of you who bake on a regular basis know how effective it is in spreading cake frosting. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Using the angled spatula, gently spread out the frosting over the top and the sides of your cake. This is no easy task and you also have to move quickly as your tahini butter frosting will start to melt. Also, if you like, you could just add some frosting to the top and call it a day. For me, I like to push things to the limit so I'll just keep going. Once you're done frosting, you could wipe off excess frosting and refrigerate. Your frosting will solidify when you refrigerate and it'll look really good. But I don't have the time so I'll just keep moving. Now place a strawberry rose in the middle and check this out. Beautiful right? Don't worry I'll show you how to make this in a separate video. 
Now slice some fresh strawberries into quarters from top to bottom. Place the two innermost quarters of your strawberries over the top of your cake with the pointy angles facing the strawberry rolls. Now place the outermost parts of your strawberry quarters at the base of your cake to cover any imperfections. As you can see, mine is melting already so it's a good idea to refrigerate before this step. But anyway, when you're done, this is what it will look like. Again, you can stop here but if you're like me, you just want to keep pushing. Now we're going to add some candied walnuts over the top of the cake. Check out my video on how to make this. Again, you could stop here, but if you're anything like me, you'd cover the cake in some organic coconut flakes. So there you have it, my alkaline vegan multi-purpose cake. As you can see, this is basically three cakes in one, so you could deceive your friends and family and act like you baked one every day for three days. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like on the inside. For an alkaline vegan cake, I mean, it's not bad at all. Now go make this, tag me on Instagram and enjoy your birthdays and other occasions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next week.